Hello and Assalamu Alaikum. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss what is NASM, DOS box, NASM, and AFT installation, and assembly language example. Let's begin with NASM. NASM stands for Netwide Assembler and is considered as one of the most popular assembler for Linux. It can be used to write 16 bit. 32-bit and 64-bit programs. To download DOSBox, NASM and AFT, go to the given link. The web link is mentioned in the video description as well. This link will route you to this GitHub repository. Now click DOSBox plus NASM plus AFT.zip. To download the required file, click download raw file. Once the download is completed, extract the downloaded file. In this extracted folder, you will see two files for DOSBox installation, one for Windows and one for Mac and one folder that contains NASM and AFT. First install DOSBox. After installing DOSBox, copy this folder and paste it in your desired destination. Once copied, rename the folder accordingly. This folder contains NASM as well as AFT. NASM is an assembler while AFD is a debugger. AFD stands for Advanced Free Debugger. In order to program and work in this environment, create a new source file with .asm extension. That source file must be saved in this same folder and it can be opened with any desired application for example notepad. Or for simplicity, you can copy existing .asm file and paste it again and then you can rename it. In my scenario, as this is lecture 5, so I am going to save this file as lecture5.asm. Now this lecture5.asm is our source file. To work in this file, let's open this file and write the following syntax. This is the starting line of every assembly language program. In this instruction, ORG stands for originate and 100 represents the address. So the whole instruction means originate the code from address 100. 0x represents hexadecimal as all the addresses are in hexadecimal. These two lines are the end of every assembly language program. Move AX, 4C00 is the syntax used to prepare for exit operation. While interrupt 0x21 means the OS should perform the above operation, INT stands for interrupt. Let's write the body. To add comments in assembly language, we add semicolon. So in the first instruction, move AX, 2 means initialize AX register with the value 2. So the processor will store 2 as 0, 0, 0, 2 because AX is a register of 16 bits. Similarly, BX is going to store the value of BX as 0, 0, 0, Two. In the third instruction, that is add AX, BX, value stored in AX, that is 0002, and value stored in BX, that's again 0002, will be added, and the result value will be 0004. 
this triple zero four will be stored in AX. Do remember that the first register is always our destination. So our AX value will be triple zero four. Let's execute this program. In order to execute, first save the file. Once done, now open DOS box. DOSBox is a virtual machine and it creates virtual environment. The first step is to mount source directory. So I am going to use the keyword mount. After mount, you need to specify a character which can be from A up to Z. So I am going to utilize C. After that, you need to define the path of source directory. In my case, that's slash users slash code. So my drive is successfully mounted. After mounting, I need to enter my source directly. For that, write C colon and you need to press enter. Now you are in your source directory. In order to translate your source file into listing file, and output file, you need to use the keyword that's NASM. After NASM, you need to mention the name of the file, which in my case is lecture5.asm. Now, do remember that you can utilize two switches. Switch number one is dash L in case if you want to generate a listing file. So dash L after dash L, you can write any name. So it's better to use the same name, lecture 5lst The extension for listing file is .lst. Similarly, if you want to also get an output file, so use another switch that is dash O. And then you need to mention the name that is lecture 5. And now the extension of output file will be .com press enter so our listing file and the output file has been successfully generated to view these files you can go to the source directory so if you check over here this was our source file which we created initially and after assembling we got a listing file and an output file let's open this listing file first In this file, you will see four columns. In column number one, you will see numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 8. These are the line numbers of the source code. Column number two, you will see all the addresses. These addresses mentioned here starts from 0, next is 3, then 6, and so on. Do remember, if you want to calculate the effective address, the real address residing inside the memory, add 100 with this address because we have originated our code from 100. So 0 plus 100 is 100. So the effective address of this instruction is 100. Next is 3. So add 100. So the effective address of this instruction is 103 and so on. The third column consists of machine code and data. So B8 is a machine code of move AX and 0200 is actually the little endian representation of 0002 that we moved in AX. And the fourth column is actually your source code. Now let's open AFD to get familiar with 8086 environment. For that you need to write AFD. AFD stands for Advanced Free Debugger. And after that, the name of output file. So in our case, that's lecture5.com. So you will see this screen. On the top left corner, you will see AX, BX, CX and DX. In this program, we are only utilizing AX and BX. If you see over here, and here you will find two windows. The top right window is known as M1 window and the bottom window is known as M2 window. 
M1 and M2 windows can be utilized to see data stored on addresses in memory. Let us suppose we want to see what is stored on address 100. To see that, just write M1 space and after that mention the address. So if you see over here now, the address is 100. The data stored here is B80200. The machine code of move AX comma 02. In this manner, we can easily visualize the data in the memory. In order to execute this program, you need to press F1. So initially, if you focus over here, this white line, it is on move AX comma 002. So initially, if you check, the value of A is all 0. So when I press F1, so now it is updated to 0002. Similarly, now the white line is on move BX comma 0002. So when I press F1 again, so now my value of BX is again updated to 2. The last instruction that needs to be executed is add AX comma BX. So let's press F1. So now the value of AX has been updated to 0004. One important thing that you need to remember that almost all the Intel based processor follow little endian to store bytes on the memory. That's why for instruction move AX comma 2 AX become 0002 and this 0002 is stored as 0200 in the memory. In order to exit from AFD just write quit and press enter. 